Hello, hello, Omar Dimers here and welcome to the third day of Tata Steel 2021 and I would like to show you the best game of day three, probably the best game of whole tournament, even we have only three rounds, but this is gonna be the best game of the tournament. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that I understand what just happened in this game. I completely have no clue. Uh, first, I try to check some of the analyses of the Grandmasters and they just commented that they have no clue as well so if if you see some analysis which is really good one then let me know in the comment but uh, so far uh, even the grandmaster said that they have no clue and now i would like to warn you if you watch this video uh, it can cause you a uh, brain damage this game was just insane and i had just no idea what's going on so without further ado let's see the game between fabiano caruana who's going to play as white and Jan krzysztof of Duda, who in this game gonna play as black. We have e4, e5, knight f3 and knight f6. So a Russian game so far, pretty much very standard. Um, knight e5, d6, kicking the knight, so knight f3, knight e4. And now, of course, the main line is uh, is pretty boring. D, d4, d5, bishop d3. Uh, we have knight c6. We have the castle, bishop e7, preparing to the castle and so on. Pretty much this was played plenty of times. However, we have knight c3, uh, which nowadays is a little bit more fashionable so um asking the the knight what you're gonna do um not much can be done of course black doesn't want to uh, waste the tempi here so uh, we have knight c3 d takes on c3 opening both of the diagonals for the for the bishops by white we have bishop e7 now preparing to the castle on the king side and now we have bishop e3 so caruana uh, says that okay i'm gonna um, play the castle on the on the queen side that's gonna be uh, very very sharp probably and now black have a choice black have a choice the main idea here is actually knight c6 uh, and the idea is that after queen d2 we played bishop e6 and then after castle uh, queen d7 king b1 um, and after bishop f6 uh, setting up the bishops on these diagonals uh, and after waiting for a while uh, and after h4 black have a choice uh, and most of the games uh, follows with the castle on the queen side okay so this is this is the main line here the main idea however Jan Krzysztof Duda went for one of the sharpest line here and he said I'm not gonna move my knight to c6 I'm gonna move knight, my knight to f6 so from the f6 of course um, the knight gonna be a defender of the position that indicates that he gonna uh, make the castle on the king side so that's gonna be very very sharp uh, we have queen d2 we have the castle we have the castle on the queen side, knight f6 as planned, and now bishop d3. And now for your information, Duda played this uh, with the black pieces a couple of times. Uh, but I have to also tell you, he lost in 2019 against uh, Jan Nepomniasi. He lost against Fabiano Caruana. So he chose this again, and that means that he prepared something. So he played c5, the same, uh, and for your information, Caruana is one of the best experts in the world who play a Russian game himself. And he also played this um, variation with the c5, with the castle on the king side. So Fabiano Caruana knows the position from the white's perspective, from the black per perspective, um, and this position was played by Caruana and by Duda. What Duda prepared against Caruana? we don't know uh, here the main ideas rook h to e1 this was played in the past king b1 very natural it was played in the past and um, h3 with the idea of g4 for example this was uh, this is well known however fabiano caruana played the novelty here rook h to g1 so uh, this is the first moment where uh, young Krzysztof Duda started to think what to do. Of course, um, the next move is obvious. So G4 is coming. Uh, what to play? 11 minutes and young Krzysztof Duda answer with B5 indicates that, okay, you're going to attack me on the king side. I'm going to attack you on the queen side. Who's going to checkmate whom? Uh, we will see. 
Of course, pawn on b5 cannot be taken because queen a5 wins that pawn. It can be defended, but after d5 um, and exchanging a couple of pieces, we're gonna have this bishop on e6 and uh, the queen gonna take on um, on a2. So uh, this pawn better to not touch it. Uh, Caruana has his own pawn and his own attack, so he plays g4. And now what to do? Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda also taught for a while another 11 minutes and now uh, h6 doesn't work obviously because of this battery bishop uh, and uh, we're gonna have queen g5 and some mating ideas here if the bishop is taken it's even worse uh, because the rook uh, with the queen with the bishop with the knight this is impossible to survive this attack um, so that's not possible bishop g4 taking the pawn it's also a bad idea opening the, the g file bishop h6 is just winning here and now uh bishop f3 of course cannot be played because of the of the rook g7 first uh, and after check then queen g5 and there is uh, you know forced checkmate in three you can actually try to find the forced checkmate um if let's say bishop h5 is played we're gonna have the rook h7 and checkmate on the on the g7 that is the one way uh, of doing if we play rook g8 it also doesn't work because white actually can sacrifice the queen um, and after taking uh, deliver the checkmate this way so uh, this way or another that's gonna be the checkmate better not to touch the pawn on, on um, g4 and on the b5 as well uh, this is why we have bishop b7 by Jan Krzysztof Duda attacking the knight uh, and now we have queen e2 defending that knight but at the same time blocking the bishop so quite a shocking move uh, but Fabiano Caruana played that immediately that means this is part of his preparation uh, and here Jan Krzysztof Duda play, uh, taught for another 15 minutes uh, and he played indeed c4. We have bishop f5 again immediately move uh, and now play g6 or not. That means uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda gonna win the bishop or maybe not. Would you like to play this move g6 when Fabiano Caruana spent completely no time? He just, you know, make all the moves immediately. That's going to be very, very risky. However, g6 is actually the best move in the position. Uh, what Fabiano Caruana could play it here. The best move in the position and definitely his preparation was knight d4. Why do we know that? We know that because a very similar line happened in the game. So knight d4 um, and now what have to be played is something like knight d5 uh, and there are a couple of variations here. Very, very complicated one. I'm not going to show you because the real game was complicated enough. However, g6 was very very important uh, why because this bishop is extremely dangerous we don't want to catch this bishop but this bishop is dangerous with the sacrifice on h7 which uh you cannot see it yet why uh but you will see a couple of variations uh, of course the bishop cannot be taken uh because we're gonna have knight f5 um, and now uh g5 is coming the queen uh, on h5 is coming and so on so for example knight d5 just to avoid uh, but still g5 is the the strongest move in this position and even if the queen come to d7 try to get this um this knight the knight can jump to the h6 the the, the king has to go to the corner now we're gonna have the bishop d4 and this is completely crazy the only uh move here is actually f6 but it's after queen h5 it's still losing and it's uh, it's very very difficult to even imagine that uh, black can survive this attack so of course uh, even if g6 is the best move in the position Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't play that that he indicates okay that is the, definitely the preparation I don't want to get into uh, Fabiano's line we remember what happened to Ding Liren uh, in the candidates tournament if you haven't seen that game against Fabiano Caruana check over there also one of the best uh, games of that tournament um, where Fabiano Caruana uh, sacrificed two pawns and had the 
beautiful game and um, almost won but yeah uh, i don't want to make a spoilers if you want to watch i, I really recommend that young Krzysztof duda went for rook e8 and um, also very good move and um, now we have knight d4 um, as planned and now knight d5 and here knight e3 is the main idea a uh, follow by the bishop g5 on this diagonal or maybe bishop f6 on this diagonal um very nice and here believe me or not fabiano caruana started to think and he was thinking for 45 minutes to find the best move in the position so of course if he just go for the pawn um it's uh, it's not really the best idea knight e3 we're gonna have f takes on e3 then the queen i uh, cannot shouldn't take because of them of the bishop g5 if we take with the with the pawn we're gonna have bishop g5 anyway and after rook g3 uh black has the initiative attacking the pawn here the pawn is pinned and also the queen can come for example to b6 with the attack on the on the knight with the attack on this pawn uh, also can come to a5 with the attack on the a2 and that's gonna be pretty good for for black so of course there is no way that fabiano caruana gonna take this pawn uh, king b1 looks like very very safe it could be played however again knight e3 and after let's say queen e3 uh bishop f8 it's very difficult to imagine that actually white gonna get uh, some decisive attack there are some ideas of course uh, of uh maybe even queen h3 could be played um but but still very very unlikely uh it's still very safe g6 is always on the board and can be played however in this position we have the move which is the best move in the position so after 45 minutes we have knight e6 so first of all uh the knight cannot be taken that's obvious um because if the knight is taken then we're gonna have bishop e6 with the attack on the on the knight and um, and the check so after king h8 we're gonna have bishop d5 bishop d5 rook d5 and even if we uh, have this uh bishop g5 it's not that dangerous because now white simply can pick up another pawn um, and after bishop e3 uh, white actually have two extra pawns uh in the end game only with the heavy pieces so f takes on e6 of course uh not gonna work interesting move which Jan Krzysztof duda could play is actually knight c3 uh does it work not really because after let's say b takes on c3 a queen a5 could be played in immediately or maybe even take the the knight and after bishop e6 uh, king h5 still we have this bishop um, g5 with this with this diagonal we have the bishop on the on the f6 on this diagonal looks very dangerous that's probably g5 would be the best move here and after let's say uh bishop e4 trying to bring the bishop to the defense uh maybe some move like bishop d4 now attacking the position attacking also the bishop that would be that would be uh, pretty much insane uh, maybe h4 now defending this pawn it's still very very risky and a very interesting line uh, however Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't go for taking that pawn messing up the pawn structure he went for queen a5 so what is going on actually the pawn on a2 is under attack uh, also still the knight is um, under attack it's hanging uh, and fabiano caruana could go immediately for the for the rook d5 now the point is this is the best engine line and if we check it's completely equal uh, because after bishop d5 we're gonna have knight g7 because why not then we are gonna have g5 with the idea of the of the queen h5 of course bishop h7 can be a sacrifice over here uh, first uh, and so on so very very uh, tempting however the best uh, engine line here would be queen a2 uh, and after knight e8 uh, queen a1 king d2 picking the rook on g1 and now after knight c7 uh 
queen h1 and after exchanging uh, the material is equal and according to the engine the position is completely equal uh, both of the sides have the queen and a pair of bishops that's that's just insane uh, however Fabiano Caruana is not an engine uh, he was also not interested in a draw he goes all in queen f3 so the knight is still hanging and the pawn on a2 is hanging and now attacking um and now attacking this knight twice but also at the same time setting up the queen on the same diagonal with the bishop so some potential uh, attacks for for example knight c3 he had to calculate what would happen if knight c3 is played actually knight c3 is a pretty good move because for example now queen b7 is of course forced so queen b7 and now after knight a2 with the check king b1 knight b4 with some ideas but it's very difficult to find the ending ideas here uh, probably something like bishop d4 maybe setting up the attack on the on the g7 maybe f takes on e6 right now a bishop takes on e6 king h8 and uh, this is pretty much playable for both the sides but the but this line is this is another just another one of the insane lines in this position Jan Krzysztof Duda is not interested in this kind of lines he also goes for a very very crazy thing bishop f6 inviting Fabiano Caruana for g5 now why does he do that Fabiano Caruana um, doesn't have much choice uh, he plays g5 and now Duda of course cannot go back that's losing two tempi so doesn't make much sense he also cannot go to the very safe um, e5 it doesn't make any sense because we still have on the board bishop h7 I would like to just show you what's gonna happen uh, if the bishop is taken then of course we're gonna have queen f7 then g6 uh, the rook can come and deliver the checkmate and so on it's impossible to survive so king h8 uh, and then after queen h5 uh, how to continue why this completely winning here uh, even we have something like rook e6 trying to win back some material but of course bishop g6 with the check king g8 now bishop f7 winning even more material uh so of course white is completely winning here uh there is nothing here uh we cannot you know deliver any checkmate no counterplay uh it's it's just completely completely losing but of course Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't want to uh, go for any you know lines like that if he said a he want to say b and he of course sacrificed the bishop on c3 what a game what is going on here do you see what is going on everything is hanging the bishop is hanging this this knight is hanging everything is hanging um what to play now this is very tricky can we actually take this bishop uh the bishop cannot be taken if the bishop is taken the thing is that we're gonna have knight c3 uh, and now the queen is under attack so queen b7 is forced but now we're gonna have a forced checkmate you can actually find the the first checkmate knight a2 uh this is the the starting of the sequence king b1 uh because the queen of course control d2 so not much choice if the king comes to b2 then we're gonna have a c3 and uh, the queen gonna follow deliver the checkmate on b2 uh if knight c3 king c1 and this time knight e2 this side but there is no pawn on a2 so that is the that is the difference king b2 queen b4 and it doesn't really matter where the king goes uh, king a1 um, queen a3 with the check and we are gonna have this beautiful checkmate so it cannot be taken and um, after bishop takes on c3 uh, the bishop cannot be taken also what else to play rook d5 it looks like very very attractive move and indeed it's a not so bad move um f takes on e6 uh, doesn't work in this position because bishop h7 bishop h7 if the bishop is taken and um, then we're gonna have g6 as i show you before one of the variations and then the queen gonna come to f7 and we're gonna have the checkmate here okay now with the rook on the on the fifth rank that we're gonna have this kind of checkmate if king h8 is not much better because bishop g6 uh 
and now even if we take this rook it doesn't really matter queen h5 is coming uh, and after king g8 bishop e8 winning the material and the game and now uh, if the bishop if black tries to keep the bishop on this diagonal and save it um, then we're gonna have queen f7 and i hope you see that already that after queen f8 uh, we gonna have this kind of checkmate with the bishop controlling h6 so um, another kind of checkmate if bishop b2 that would be the most aggressive but not enough king b2 let's say uh, c3 king c1 and the king can escape here queen a3 king d1 now uh, e5 is forced just to take under control the, the f7 square uh, but after rook g3 there is no way to actually save that's gonna be um, the checkmate queen a2 let's say uh, rook h3 the king can start to run but uh, but it's too late uh, it's 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 just too late uh, of course if uh, the king goes to d8 we're gonna have the checkmate on d7 if take the the, the bishop we're gonna have this kind of checkmate of course black can drop some pieces but this also is the is the checkmate so after rook d5 what black would have to find that would be very very interesting the only move uh g6 of course can be played this is this is okay but much stronger is rook e6 and this is this is just insane because now b takes on c3 can be played uh, and then after g6 uh, and bishop e4 unpinning the rook pretty pretty crazy stuff and for example after queen a2 uh king d2 can can actually run to the center it's quite safe over there uh, but still rook a2 e8 with the attack on the on the bishop yes the rook can defend um but then b4 in the engine shows that this is completely draw even if black has uh, one extra bishop but the bishop uh, sooner or later uh it's gonna be uh gonna be taken back uh, and this is just another a crazy line here so uh rook d5 would be very very sharp but fabiano caruana doesn't want to waste a time and he plays absolutely the best move in the position boom bishop h7 uh sacrificing yet another piece so the bishop hanging uh the knight is hanging the bishop is hanging uh, i think john bartolomeo should make the, the the video about the hanging pieces this is the really really great idea here we have king h7 not much choice if the king h8 then of course we're gonna have the checkmate in couple of moves so we have king h7 and now uh g6 g6 another beautiful extremely strong move the main idea is to actually make a space for for the knight this is the main idea of course uh if the king goes for example to g8 we're gonna have the the queen f7 so that's not even possible uh this is why we have f takes on g6 the strongest move in the position and now knight g5 as planned uh we have king h8 and now this is the move number 21 so 22nd move uh, now fabiano caruana is going to play and both of the players have eight minutes on the clock so fabiano caruana also burn quite a lot of time uh, and now how to continue here how would you continue with the white pieces here it's a very very important question because there is only one way for white to continue the attack you can actually try to pause the video uh, and try to find the the decisive the best move for white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready do you already have the headache because i already have the headache I'm, i still don't know what is going on on the on the board uh, queen h3 doesn't work because after king g8 we yes we're gonna have something like queen h7 uh but then king f8 and how you're gonna continue the attack you have queen g6 uh with the checkmate but actually now black gonna have a couple of moves so bishop b2 first uh, and after king b1 what we have to play is rook e7 defending f7 uh, and now after knight h7 king g8 uh now white are in troubles because this knight gonna jump to the c3 
Uh, and the queen can continue the attack, for example, on a7. This is completely insane. It's just different planet of the of the analysis. I'm really impressed that did this happen uh, when Jan Krzysztof Duda plays so sharp game against Fabiano Caruana. Both of them um, went for for the most complicated lines. This is this is just insane. Uh, here, King B2 would be the best probably, uh, but now White have to fight for for a draw because after c3 king a1 knight before and now we're gonna have the checkmate here but the knight was very important defender of the of the f6 so double edge position now probably what we would have here uh, the king cannot go there because of the of the checkmate uh, so probably we would have just threefold repetition here but 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 this line is also pretty much insane uh however queen h3 doesn't work there is nothing there uh if knight f7 this is another very interesting line um king g8 and now knight h6 and what now if the knight is taken then we're gonna have um, rook g6 bishop can retreat to g7 but then white can actually sacrifice some of the pieces uh, and white would win that game with the with the bishop controlling this diagonal and the queen controlling the light squares um, there is no way to stop actually uh, however king h7 could be played by black and now uh, after queen f7 uh, the knight cannot be taken because it's defended by the bishop uh, so the king cannot take the the pawn cannot take uh, but now bishop b2 and now white have to fight for the draw king b1 is not possible anymore the knight gonna jump to the to the c3 this is another complicated line a uh, king b2 probably uh, and then the point is that after queen c3 uh, king b1 the queen can retreat to the f6 um, and exchange and exchange the queens and uh, probably fight for the draw but white would have to fight for a draw here so this is another insane line however fabiano caruana calculated all of that if he could uh, in the eight minutes he found absolutely the best move in the position bishop d4 taking under control b2 so any sacrifice on b2 is not possible anymore moreover is the, if this bishop is taken then of course um, the the rook gonna come to d4 and it's gonna be very very dramatic for Jan Krzysztof Duda so what to play not much choice bishop b2 of course is not an answer here this is why we have bishop d4 rook d4 and now we cannot play something like rook e1 it looks like very attractive um, and after rook e1 queen e1 it's almost the checkmate however after rook d1 there is a very serious problem where you gonna move the queen because if you for example want to defend this knight you really cannot because a queen e5 uh, and we're gonna lose the queen so this is guarded by the tactic if you move if we move queen e7 we giving up the the knight but not this is the problem the problem is queen h3 now is winning uh, king g8 and after queen h7 we're gonna have the checkmate as the queen is actually occupying uh, e7 square so that's another crazy line uh, and finally queen e8 which looks the best but still queen h3 king g8 uh, queen h7 king f8 now queen h8 uh, king e7 and now after queen uh, g7 with the check king d8 we're gonna have queen b7 with the attack on the rook and double attack on the knight that's that's uh, that's insane stuff rook e1 doesn't work in this position this is one Jan Krzysztof Duda played absolutely the best move in the position knight f6 uh, defending the position but now uh, of course the queen can take the bishop on b7 this is the the only move so we have queen b7 uh, and now again rook e1 could be actually played however after rook e1 queen b1 uh, rook d1 what to do with the with the queen there is only one move we have to defend the uh, rook on a8 
and after rook d6 the material is maybe equal but look at these pieces and the position of the queen uh, white have a really really comfortable game and probably would win uh, pretty easy here uh, it's very very difficult to find the plan even pla plan for for black pieces so rook e1 again doesn't work this is why we have rook a to b8 first um, and now queen f7 looks like very very dangerous now queen a2 or any other move uh, it's a very very complex position so let's say black tries to play something like queen a2 the problem is rook h4 because this rook is already over there so knight h5 and now we're gonna have queen g6 uh, and in another move we're gonna have the checkmate uh, black can deliver one check uh, but of course it doesn't matter if this rook is hanging uh, because we're gonna have the checkmate so what can be played is one more check but there are no more checks and and yeah this is pretty much game over um so black have to be very very precise the only move now is rook e1 so now rook e1 is the is the best move in the position not enough to the to win however it's extremely complicated again i'm not sure what is going on here uh rook e1 if rook e1 is played everything would be okay for for black because after queen e1 rook d1 uh, the queen can take the pawn on f2 and after let's say knight e6 threatening the checkmate then the rook can come to g8 defend uh, and now it's not that easy to actually find the winning plan for for white pieces uh if the queen takes for example on g6 it looks like very attractive however it's guarded by the tactic uh because of this double attack so that's not possible and if knight f8 with the plan of attacking on g6 uh we again gonna have um queen e3 with the check and now after king b1 queen e8 forcing to exchange uh the queens the queen doesn't have a really good moves uh, the knight is under attack so probably queen e8 knight e8 uh, and yes knight can win one of the pawns however now the knight is under attack probably something like knight e7 now rook f8 and again Again, if you count and the pieces black have actually one extra pawn so would have a slight advantage uh but still white have um, a little bit better uh, placed pieces probably can win one of the pawns and that would end in the draw so rook e1 this is not the move fabiano caruana played of course uh, he played the best move in the position rook d1 uh, we have rook g1 rook g1 and now rook e8 threatening the checkmate in two uh, but of course Fabiano Caruana sees that and immediately went for knight e6 attacking uh, threatening the checkmate in one uh, very interesting rook g8 this time doesn't work because after queen g8 we don't have any any tactics here the queen is still on the a5 so there are no no tactics here queen a2 is of course losing uh, now we're gonna have rook g5 and then checkmate is coming we can deliver one check uh, king d2 we can deliver one more check uh, but yeah that's all let's say queen a4 and we're gonna have rook h5 and this kind of checkmate so uh black have to be extremely precise both of the players have about uh one or two minutes on the clock so this how precise they play it's just amazing young Krzysztof duda is forced to give up the exchange so we have rook e6 queen e a2 Jan Krzysztof Duda has one minute exactly in this moment uh, and Fabiano Caruana has four minutes. Jan Krzysztof Duda plays queen a2 and Fabiano started to think what would you play in this position? In this position Fabiano Caruana has the winning move um have the winning move he's up the exchange uh, he has four minutes and he burned three minutes in this position uh, and he didn't play the best move in this position finally uh fabiano caruana could go for rook g6 and now this is very strong move after queen a1 king d2 queen b2 yes black have very strong pawns on the queen side however uh now we're gonna have rook g2 uh, and that's gonna be very very close to the checkmate together with the queen 
So probably queen d4 would be forced. Uh, and after, let's say, uh, king e1, queen e5, just exchanging the, um, the queens. So uh, probably something like rook e3, exchanging the queens, and now d5. The point is that white at the end have uh, rook a6, uh, pick up this pawn, uh, and then pick up one of these pawns. King is far, far away in the corner. It's a winning continuation for white. However, Fabiano Caruana in this moment played queen h3 with the check, king g8, queen e6, uh, king h7, queen h3 with the check, king g8. This is move number 33. Uh, so he just wanted to have more time and he believed that after exchanging the queens, uh, that he gonna have the winning endgame and he gonna have more time. And indeed, this is still better endgame for, for white, uh, but it's not that clear how to win that. I mean, uh, we have a king f7, this was played, king d2, uh, and here we have a6 by young Krzysztof Duda, king e3, king c3 could be slightly better, but at the end we're gonna have exactly the same position, because if the, the king c3 uh, is played, then the knight would jump to the d5 uh, with the check and controlling b4, so the king cannot really get to the b4, uh, so uh, Fabiano went for king e3, we have knight d5, uh, king d4, so we have exactly the same position and now knight e7 with the idea of defending this pawn and now the king can somehow get uh, and defend this pawn so this is the plan and this is the another critical we have only critical moments in in this game this is another critical moment where fabiano caruana have to be extremely precise what he have to play is play a4 as fast as possible now the point is that after let's say king a6 or, or, or king e8 doesn't really matter, uh, a takes on b5, a takes on b5, we have rook b1 attacking this pawn and this pawn cannot really be defended, I mean it can be defended this way, knight c6, a king c3, knight a7 defending the problem is that the white rook is extremely mobile so first deliver the check asking okay are you going to defend this um, this pawns because if you are gonna go and defend this pawns uh, i'm gonna pick up your pawns your knight is on a7 so you don't have chance king f6 would be forced and only now rook a1 uh, and now the knight have to be moved so knight c6 now rook a6 attacking the knight attacking the pawn on d6 and it's pretty much game over over. Um, knight e7, rook d6 with the check, and now rook a6. Of course, we don't play um, rook b6. That would be disaster because of this uh, fork. Um, but rook a6 is enough to win the game. And then this pawn's gonna fall. Uh, these pawns are blocked. So there is no way to actually save the game. So uh, Fabiano Caruana was right. He could exchange the queens. Uh, however, he had to be extremely precise here. However, he went for rook e1. And this is the problem. Now Jan Krzysztof Duda has a time to actually get the king to the c6. So he played immediately king e8, uh, we have um, a4, we have king d7, a takes on b5, a takes on b5, uh, and now if rook a1 is just too slow, because king c6, uh, or even um, knight c6, this is also another variation which could be played, uh, and here rook a6 doesn't work because king b7, and now white cannot take this pawn, that would be losing, have to go back, uh, and there is no entry points. If this pawn is, is taken, uh, if Fabiano pushed too much, that of course would be losing. Uh, and this would be winning for, for black. So Fabiano would have to be, you know, uh, extremely careful here. Uh, of course, you know, he's number two in the world for some reason. So uh, he didn't go for rook a1. He went for rook g1 saying, okay, uh, now I'm gonna focus on your pawns. Your knight uh, is just, uh, has to stay on e7. And now we have king c6, stabilizing the position here. We have h4, uh, asking um, Jan Krzysztof of Duda maybe exchange this pawn for these two pawns uh, and then I'm gonna have this um, past pawn and young Krzysztof Duda said okay I think this is uh, pretty much okay for me uh, he just played knight f5 
winning the pawn I, I mean exchanging for these two pawns of course the rook gonna take it um so we have uh, after king c3 we have knight h4 and now we have king b4 otherwise uh, duda would go for the king c5 and then push the pawn so king b4 um, is the best move in the position but it's not enough to win we have knight f3 attacking the rook otherwise the rook would come to the to the g4 attack the 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 knight and also these two pawns so we have knight f3 first we have rook g6 as planned and now knight d4 attacking this pawn asking fabiano okay you can take my pawn i'm gonna take your pawn um and then maybe i'm gonna have some chances with this three connected past pawns uh we have c3 fabiano say my pawn can hold your three pawns here we have knight e2 uh, and now of course rook g7 now we have knight f4 with the with the threat of winning the pawn um so fabiano went for king a5 and now knight e2 also attacking the pawn on c3 and after king b4 knight f4 for king a5 knight e2 uh, king before the players agreed for a draw what a game uh, I, I hope everything is fine with your brain. Uh, my brain is, is, is probably damaged after, after this game. I should, I should go to sleep right now. Uh, but yeah, I would like to upload for you this, this video. It's just insane. This game was just insane. Drop the comment if you like this game for some reason. Uh, I, I think everybody should like this game. This was just beautiful. And I look how long this video is and I didn't show you even all the lines. Uh, there are a lot of very very complicated lines in the middle game i didn't even try to cover all of them and they, they were just insane and at the end as always i would like to show you the standings after day three we have uh, three leaders because uh, pentala Hari krishna won against the leader nils grandelius in the french defense and uh, nils grandelius uh couldn't handle actually Hari krishna um won that game so we have five leaders now, uh, Pentala, Hare Krishna, Magnus Carlsen, Anish, Giri, Fabiano Caruana and Nils Grandelius. So uh, it's pretty exciting in the tournament. Of course, we have uh, 10 more rounds to the end. So a lot of good games gonna happen. And of course, if you like this video, press like for some reason. If you don't like it, press unlike. And if you um, want to see other games from this tournament, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.